Where'd you go? Hey everybody, uh, thanks for clicking on the video, but I just want to, before it starts, apologize on the terrible quality of this video. You know, it looked really good on camera and then all of a sudden put it on YouTube and it totally sucks. So if you can bear with us, bear through the video, you probably can't read some stuff on the barrel and everything, but thanks for watching anyway. Enjoy. How's it going everyone? So thanks for tuning in once again. Um, if you saw our last video, uh, you may remember that it was kind of an old gun that we uh, debuted. And in keeping with these old firearm reviews, uh, we're going to check out another gun that's not new. I mean, this is actually newer than the one we did uh, in the previous video. However, this one is actually from 1971. Uh, probably, you'll know from the title, but uh, probably a lot of you could recognize this as the Classic Marlin Model 60 22 long rifle caliber. Uh, this one is kind of an interesting version. Uh, there's a lot of versions of this gun. Um, this is not the, one of the most rarest or sought after, but this is uh, one of the preferred orientations that you might want to get a hold of, one of the older ones. I was actually very happy to find this thing. Um, I got this around a year and a half ago um, for a really good price. The guy was just trying to unload a lot of his uh, 22 rifles. Happened to have one of these. I noticed immediately that it had the uh, full length uh, barrel and magazine. This holds 18 rounds in the tube. Uh, of course, these guns are semi-automatic and they are tube fed, as you can see. And um, they are really, really popular. Uh, I think this came out before the 1022, which probably is the more popular 22 rifle today, or like maybe of all time, I don't know. But anyway, so this being a 71 model, uh, there's a couple interesting things about it. Now, unfortunately, this does not have the coveted last shot hold open feature. You can see um, this gun's actually on safe. Uh, it's unloaded, there's nothing in there. Uh, this is actually being held open. It's because I did that. Uh, this doesn't have the automatic hold open. So with this bolt handle, you essentially pull it out. Uh, there's a little notch back there. So if you wanted to hold it open, you have to do it yourself. You just push it in, but um, this will not hold open the bolt on the last shot. That's okay though. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, it also does not have a bolt release lever, which it would have down here on the later models. Uh, they didn't start doing that until 1984, um, and I believe the rarest version of this that you could find was when they started doing that in the mid-80s and still for a couple years had the full-size magazine here. Because apparently at some point uh, they switched it to a 15-round tube, So, and then later they actually reduced the size of the barrel so it didn't look wacky having a much shorter tube and a longer barrel. I don't know. So anyway, they just reduced the size. So this is the highest capacity version they had. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have, it's a little bit old to have the hold open feature, but you know what, that really doesn't matter too much to me. Uh, this thing was in fantastic shape other than like one little nick um, on the stock. Um, this is one of the old ones with the squirrel uh, stock, which we'll, you'll see close up in a minute here. But I was really happy to find this, this thing in such good shape. Um, it was really dirty when I got it. I don't think the guy had cleaned it for a long time, but I got in there, broke it down, uh, cleaned it all up. And uh, this thing has not had one malfunction. Haven't shot it too much, probably like 100 or so rounds. Uh, not a single malfunction. But it's it's been really cool. It did come with a scope. I opted to take it off because I really like the sights on this thing. And I mean, it's kind of got like your classic like BB gun type of uh, adjustable sight. So anyway, pretty cool gun. Um, relatively simple to take apart and clean. It's not too bad. Um, we might show it. Um, maybe we will, just because this one's a little older and uh, slightly more complicated to take apart and clean than some of the newer, more common ones that you're gonna see. Um, it's really, it is a little bit easier to take apart the, the newer style. So anyway, uh, with something like this, is 22 is obviously rim fire ammunition. 
which can be a little bit more fickle uh, in semi-auto guns like this. And you have to shoot, well it's recommended to shoot the high velocity ammunition. And that's uh, exactly, we, we'll show you that here in a second, but uh, you want to make sure your 22, this is kind of old 22, but that's yeah, a different story. But anyway, you want to make sure that it is the high velocity version, uh, long 22 long rifle first to operate this action smoothly and 22s are often somewhat dirty guns so you want to make sure you clean them often um although mine really wasn't that bad after shooting all those rounds um some of you might say 100 rounds is not too much but you know when you i don't know loading the tubes kind of easy but when you have to load that tube so many times it just a little bit gets a little bit annoying for me anyway but i still really like the design and the tube fed guns are always pretty cool to me um I, I do like the semi-auto feature on it, way cooler. These have virtually no recoil, um, not too loud, don't really bang you up at all. Um, this gun's pretty light, and as a matter of fact, we're going to see how light it is. So I'm going to get our extremely fragile scale here. Check it out. Let's see how much this is. Right about five and a half pounds. So it does soak up. I mean, it's way uh, more front heavy. Hold on a second. Just make sure to carefully put this away. So this gun obviously is a little bit more top heavy because it does have the long barrel and the longer tube. And especially when that's full of ammo, does make it just, I mean, slightly more heavy. I mean, obviously these weigh freaking almost nothing. So um, almost no recoil to speak of. Just really fun gun to shoot. Uh, always wanted one of these. I was really happy to find one in such good condition. And it's just one of those things that you kind of want to have in your collection. Um, kind of want to get 1022 just because I do like the magazine fed version too. Plus, I'd probably get a lot newer one of those. Uh, but I just love the classic look of these old uh, classic guns, uh, plinkers and stuff like that. I mean, really has some nice engraving here on the stock. And um, it was just in su such, you can't pass something like this up. So anyway, uh, I think we're going to get a little bit closer and show you some cool things about this. All right, so we're just going to go over briefly how to load one of these tube guns in case you've never done it. Um, so first thing is you're going to see your tube. You're going to see, you can actually see the tube. There's a little hole there. What you're going to do is rotate this. Well, you're going to rotate it so that little dot lines up with that notch. I'm going to pull this out until the plunger is past that. Now what we're going to do is take some of our 22 ammunition. We're going to drop it down like that. And you're going to want to hold the gun so they go down. I'm just going to put a couple in. Now you're going to push this all the way in, rotate it. You're really not going to feel too much spring pressure with just a couple. Now, that'll load them down here in the receiver. There's spring pressure. All we're going to do, rack one in. This is not safe, but the gun is now ready to fire. And obviously, this being semi-automatic, should eject the case, put another one in. Now, like we said, this does not have the bolt hold open feature. So when you're done, you're either going to be counting all your shots or you're going to click and you're going to need to load some more. Um, it's kind of hard to speed load these things. Some people can grab a couple in your hand and kind of just push them in, slide them in. I kind of think that's hard, um, but I'm not used to doing this. So uh, kind of tiresome to load and does take a little bit of time. Now it's, easy and convenient as a magazine, but don't forget, you have to load the magazine before you put in the gun. So at some point, you're sticking bullets in something. So anyway, I uh, just want to show you how to do that real quick, and uh, we'll take these out. All right. So first of all, I'm going to turn this over. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see that right there, but that actually says a Glenfield Model 60. Which the Model 60 was made under a couple different names, but it was pretty much manufactured by Marlin. 
Now, obviously here you can see we have our uh, adjustable sight. Not sure exactly how many yards that goes out to, but it's very easy to adjust. Um, we have our serial number right here. Now on, <clears throat> on models made, it's the earliest model 60s actually were determined uh, by date by an actual letter. The first num or digit of the serial number would have been a letter corresponding to a year. Uh, up until a certain point when they started actually doing the numbers, uh, which this one, obviously, you can tell is a 71 because that number starts out with 71. Then after, uh, I believe, 1984 or 87 or something like that, somewhere in the 80s, uh, the first number there would no longer be the model year. You would take that number and subtract it from 100, and that's what year you would get. So that's how you can tell what year your uh, Marlin was made or your Model 60 was made. So next we're going to, so this just has your basic um, safety light right there. Um, you can see we have our nice squirrel stock, which is kind of interesting. Some of the earlier ones are made like this. Then it went to a, I think a maple leaf or something. And then I think in the eighties they were just plain. So a little bit extra pizzazz here. we got some extra engraving up, up here. And we'll take you back over here. So um, we got a little scope mount and our bolt. So very short action, obviously. But we're just going to... You go all the way back there, you just push it in. And there is no slide release. So you'll just pull that out. There you go. Now, question you're probably asking is, how do I take this apart and clean it? I really don't want to, but I think we'll I think we'll go ahead and do it. We'll just we'll break it down real quick uh, as fast as I could do it. Now on the bottom here, you're gonna see one big screw, and uh, it's then you'll see two screws over here. This last one just holds the trigger guard to the stock. That one right there is the one you're gonna want to unscrew to remove the receiver. So I'm gonna do that right now. Now you want to be careful. All these screws have very fine threads, and you want to be careful when screwing them in. Do not cross thread them. You will be sorry if you do. And these don't have to be too tight. I mean, remember, it's a 22. It's not like it's experiencing a ton of force, vibrations. I mean, just make sure that they're, they're snug. Come on. All right, so there's the rear bolt. And see, you'll see what I'm talking about. It looks like a big bolt, but it's not. Very fine threads. Don't want to over tighten that one. So then, once you're done with that, receiver just lifts right out. So, obviously, you can see your action in there, uh, the trigger assembly. Not too much to do in here, just maybe blow it out with like an air gun or just your mouth or something. I don't know. <laughs> now, on uh, the earlier models, you're not going to have so many screws. Uh, one of these, I think this rear one, is actually just like a push pin, like a plastic push pin on later models, making this thing much easier to take out. Uh, but unfortunately here, we got to do some unscrewing. So let me do that. <clears throat> and, oh, sorry, got to hold that in. There we go. Now it should just go by hand. So that's like a captured, there's the little tiny screw and it captures into this uh, pin. So now there are two screws up here at the front. This is actually not one, one screw. There's one on each side you're gonna have to remove. They're very small, very fine. Definitely gonna wanna make sure you don't cross thread those. Now, most of the way you're probably going to want to clean a 22 like this is to actually use a barrel snake, which I don't have one. Uh, I do use a brush. So once you're done with that, anyway, you're going to lift up and you can get in there, clean everything. Um, 
this still has some oil on it. I haven't shot this since I cleaned it, but there's really not too much oil you want to put on these things. Uh, more, more often than not, you're pretty much just going to be oiling up uh, the side of the um, bolt carrier and receiver and stuff like that in there where you could, I don't know if you could see in there, but that's where it's, you know, riding majority of where most of the oil you're going to want. You really don't want too much oil in these parts um, from what I've read. So anyway, put that aside. Now you're probably asking, how do you get bolt handle and the bolt carrier out? And actually, oop, I forgot to take the uh, tube out. That's in the way. So yeah, more often than not, uh, for something like this, you're going to use a barrel snake to clean it because it's pretty hard to get in there. Uh, I mean, you have to remove this, get in there with a the brush, but um, I'll have to pick up one of those. So anyway, what you're going to do to remove the bolt handle is go in, go in here, put your finger on there, pull down just a little bit, and take that right out. You're just going to barely pull down. We'll remove that. Now, this is the trickiest part is removing the bolt carrier. So you're gonna bring it up just a little bit, pull it back and pull it up out. Now you're gonna have the spring goes all the way in this hole. And as you can see, the spring's a little bent up. Uh, it's just because it's very kind of difficult to get this in. Um, straight, you really have to push this guide rod like way into into here and kind of force it down. There is a little notch in there where this rides. So once you have it all the way to this orientation, you take your snake, go through the barrel a um, bunch of times so it's clean, uh, get in here with like a Q-tip or something, try and get all the carbon out, uh, use a light cleaner, and then dry it up as good as you can, put a few drops of oil in there uh, just so this has something to ride on. And obviously you want to clean your bolt face, get in there. Uh, with something q-tip and get a lot of the gunk out i mean this thing was filthy when i got it it's still not that great but i mean gun keeps running so all right uh, i'm gonna try to put this back together it's kind of a pain <sighs> okay come on come on baby oh i wish that spring wasn't bent <clears throat> uh, if anybody has any tricks Oh, you ain't going in. Not working. Uh-oh. All right. Take two. Take two. Oh, I think we got it. Yep. Got it. Okay, so it's just hard because that spring, uh, you really have to get that guy brought and push it way up in there, or else your spring's going to bend like mine. Uh, I just hope it doesn't break. Um, I'm sure I can find a new one somewhere. Anyway. <laughs> uh now we'll just place this back on and we're going to put our two little tiny screws in the front <clears throat> and uh yeah that's right forgot to... don't forget to do that don't forget to put your bolt handle back in so here's what we're gonna do just gonna grab down there and uh pull this up just a little bit put him in there he's in okay just making sure now we can continue with the rest of the gun. <clears throat> I'll try and fa hopefully fast forward here. <laughs> this is... All right, and a trick you do, make sure you don't cross thread stuff, is to actually back out the screw. This works with all screws and bolts. Back it out while pushing towards the threads and you should feel a click when it's reached the thread engagement. Actually not feeling it right now, that's odd. There it goes. So make sure that you're not cross-threading your screws. Guys that work on cars will know what I'm talking about. There we go. Good engagement. All right, and for the back, we got that weird um, 
set up. The little tiny screw here. That's, oh, that's going in good. Now, basically, um, I kind of screwed up on that earlier. I was not holding, but it's easier to just hold with your thumb, tighten that little screw on the one side. Don't try and just unscrew both of them at the same time. So anyway, um, go ahead and reinstall this. And we'll line up our little notch and rotate it. Now, we're just going to lay this right in. Watch your um, trigger assembly there. Lay this right in. Pretty much only fits in one way. And you're going to want to install your screws and tighten them up a little bit at a time, each one. You don't want to tighten them both super tight. Because you want this to come down nice and even on the stock. Just make contact. Snug and snug. All right, so that's it. That's how you take apart and put back together 71 model model 60. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more fun with this uh, when the weather breaks, which isn't gonna be for another couple months here. But um, yeah, this was uh, just a cool little gun that I got last year. Meant to be making a video on it, and just thought, you know, since we did the old one on the shotgun, it'd be cool to throw this one up here too. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of lot of information about these things out here, but it's just cool to see a really nice example of a classic old uh, Marlin Model 6022. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please check out some of the other videos on this channel uh, if you like what we're doing. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe to the channel. All right, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.